came up just toward the end of last year, and it came up in a big way. If only I hadn't promised my buyer that based on the residential purchase agreement, they could cancel at any time for any reason and automatically get their deposit back. So here's my tip on that. Stop and think before you speak. Stop and think before you speak. Because we can't make that kind of an assurance. We can't tell the buyer that they will automatically get their good faith deposit refunded to them once the escrow company is holding it. We can't make that kind of assurance. We don't have that kind of power. We can tell the buyer that based on the purchase contract, unless and until they remove their contingencies in writing, they have the right, subject to the good faith caveat, to terminate the contract and receive a refund of their deposit. The contract says the seller shall refund the deposit. But guess what? We can't enforce the contract. We can't go to escrow and slap them around and tell them to release that deposit to the buyer. We can't do that. Because what happens is we need a mutually executed release signed by both buyer and seller in order for escrow to be legally uh, permitted to give that money back to the buyer. So I would just say, I know sometimes we mean to say one thing, but what comes out is another. So while what we mean to say is you're entitled to receive your good faith deposit back should you terminate the contract prior to removing your contingencies in writing, we can't say that you'll automatically get it or that it's for certain. You can say, according to the contract, you have the right to receive a refund or a, um, a, a, yes, a refund of your good faith deposit. That's subject to that deposit being in escrow in the first place, obviously. So. Just something to think about. Know the contract, understand the language, but remember we're not the enforcers. We, we can't enforce the terms of the contract. All we can do is explain them, and we can hope the other party understands them and help our clients as it relates to maybe working out the difficulties with the other agent. And sometimes all it is is the other agent not understanding the contract. And you can have a nice discussion. It doesn't have to be heated. doesn't have to be confrontational. It can be just collaborative, and you can explain the contract. And it, it can work very well. What could prevent it from going I'm sorry? What could prevent it from going What could prevent it? The seller, what could prevent the buyer from receiving their money back would be if the seller refused to sign an instruction authorizing escrow to get it back. That's it. If the seller doesn't sign, the buyer doesn't get the deposit back, regardless. It just can't happen. It just Could isn't going to happen. You know, I don't see in the real world escrow companies very often taking uh, fees out of the buyer's deposit because the buyer has the right to cancel. Um, I don't really see that. It could happen, of course, but I don't, I don't see it on a regular basis. They would normally be assessed to the seller unless the contract called for the buyer to pay it. It would depend on how paragraph four was written and who the allocated uh, uh, person was for the expenses. Yeah, because they can possibly use those again. So everyone understand about the good faith deposit? I know it sounds easy to say, oh, you'll get your money back, but we can't promise that. The contract says they will, but it could take time. And there is a civil code that, that uh, imposes a penalty on the seller if they refuse. There's a $1,000 penalty. But if a seller doesn't understand the contract, then that $1,000 penalty isn't going to mean too much, right? So it's really about education. It's really about explaining the contract. And sometimes that's what it takes.